mom's here. Where is the camera? But where is the camera? Hey everyone, welcome to Garbage Time. I'm your host Katie Nolan and this is a room that used to be a janitor's closet. Coming up tonight, we have the legendary Bill Raftery, basically the sweetest man alive. Plus, I'll get into some of the proposed rule changes in the NFL and NHL, and then I have a few ideas for the student athletes heading home from the NCAA tournament earlier than expected. But first, let's take a look back at the week in sports. SMU coach Larry Brown said he thinks this year's Kentucky team could make the NBA playoffs. The only difference between Kentucky and an NBA playoff team, of course, is that the Kentucky players are paid more. <laughs> a Manchester United midfielder reportedly offered a student 10,000 pounds to have sex with him and his teammate, proposing a scenario unlike soccer in that everyone scores and feels satisfied afterwards. <laughs> Vistiviano posted a long Instagram message to Donald Sterling, saying, I will forever be your angel. She went on to add, please send money. <laughs> Greg Hardy signed a one-year deal with the Dallas Cowboys, despite the fact that he still faces domestic abuse charges for allegedly throwing his girlfriend onto a couch covered in assault rifles, which, in Dallas, just known as a couch. <laughs> Starbucks this week announced plans for a delivery service, and if they're as accurate with addresses as they are with names, this should be fun. <laughs> Elsewhere, a recent poll found that the only thing more popular in the state of Wisconsin than quarterback Aaron Rodgers is cheese. So I decided to poll some New Yorkers to see which things are more popular here than Giants quarterback Eli Manning. Name one thing that you like more than Eli Manning. Chocolate. Pizza. Ooh, pancakes. Donuts. More than Eli Manning? Nothing. Eli Manning or whiskey? Whiskey. Eli Manning or tapioca pudding? Tapioca pudding. Eli Manning or Procter and Gamble? Oh, definitely Procter and Gamble. Eli Manning or a Broadway play? Which play? What's the name of a play? Eli Manning or the cartoon Doug? Do, 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 Definitely Doug. Eli Manning or Rush Hour Traffic? Eli Manning. Eli Manning or a hard day's work? Eli Manning. I didn't think I even liked the Eli Manning so much. <laughs> so Aaron Rodgers, second only to cheese. Eli Manning? somewhere between pancakes and rush hour traffic. <laughs> and lastly, one headline I found particularly interesting this week was this story about Jason Reed, a former Washington Post columnist who was set to debut his own radio show in Washington, D.C.'s ESPN 980 on Monday. Everything was in place, the promotional tweets were tweeted. Monday morning, 6 a.m., it's about to go down. But then it didn't. Instead, the program was indefinitely postponed before the hot takes even had a chance to get lukewarm. You may be asking, who cares about personnel movements at a small-time sports talk station on AM radio? Which is a fair point. But my problem isn't with the cancellation of what would undoubtedly be a mind-numbing sausage fest that unironically called itself the Man Cave. Uh, it's with this glaring issue of conflict of interest in the sports world that we all just kind of ignore. See, Reed had been a longtime critic of Redskins Brass, because who isn't? And ESPN 980 just happens to be controlled by Redskins owner Dan Snyder. Yeah, the guy who makes Donald Trump seem not so bad and Donald Sterling seem not so racist owns the local sports radio station. And that's not all. This past summer, the Redskins and the Washington Times put out a joint press release announcing their unique partnership that would give reporters from the Times side gigs reporting directly for the Redskins on their in-house content network. What? Keep in mind, Dan Snyder once sued a newspaper for publishing an unflattering story about him. And yet, we just let him own or partner with the media. Here's the thing, if you're a sports team, the media isn't supposed to be your partner. It's supposed to be, like, your SAT proctor, who keeps an eye on you and calls you out when you do something shady. But the craziest part is that, unlike insisting your team name isn't racist, this isn't just a Dan Snyder issue. Plenty of team owners also own major media properties in their market. Similarly, a number of media companies also own sports franchises. Just to give you one example, the Philadelphia Flyers are owned by Comcast, which owns Comcast Sportsnet and NBC Sports Network, which cover the Philadelphia Flyers. 
Yeah, but I'm sure there's no way any of this actually affects the quality of journalism, right? We are hearing from Sane owner Tom Benson in an exclusive only on Fox 8 News. Everybody wanted to hear what he had to say. Right. And you got him this morning. And we should also mention, Liz, that Fox 8 is among Tom Benson's holdings. Oh, hey, side note, that guy we're reporting on, he's our boss. Now let's check in on the traffic with Regina. <laughs> Sports has become such big business that essentially everyone is in bed with everyone else which is really bad. Not just because I don't particularly want to be in bed with Chris Berman, but because we're all trying not to offend any of our partners, and our partners are basically everyone. And that leads to this happening. No NFL player dominated the headlines like Ray Rice. Unfortunately, all of his 2014 footage came to us via TMZ. I'm here with co-executive producer of TMZ. Tuesday, TMZ reported. TMZ Sports reported. TMZ. TMZ. Again from TMZ. TMZ reporting that the two were on an official date. TMZ breaks the news because they're not trying to outbid someone for the right to air sports footage. They don't care if they're in trouble with the NFL or the NBA. They find information on you, they publish it. And when TMZ is the beacon of ethics in our field, you know something's wrong. So what's the solution? I have, I'll be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> but at this point, no one's really even acknowledging that this is a problem, so I think that's a start. So somebody get working on that. Just not me, I'm, ve I'm very busy. Up next, which rules in sports need to be broken? And later, I reveal the garbage time player of the week. Who's it gonna be? I don't know, well I know, but you don't know. Change, it can mean so many different things. It's the stuff your grandmother pays with at the grocery store, or the thing you do to the channel when this show comes on. Oh, Aww. who wrote that? Uh, but what does it mean for sports? In the past few weeks, we've seen a number of rule changes proposed that could drastically change the look and feel of the games we love. The National Hockey League is considering a switch to three-on-three -three overtime. Over in the NFL, the Indianapolis Colts have proposed a bonus try, which would give teams a chance to convert a nine-point play following a successful two-point conversion and a 50-yard field goal. Okay, Colts. Uh, and in baseball, the changes are already almost here as MLB prepares to implement time restraints to help speed up the pace of play. Where do we draw the line? Good question, viewer. Here to help me try to answer it is SB Nation featured contributor, Matt Ufford. Hello. Hi. Hi. Featured contributor. Yeah, it's, it's I, I don't have a title. That's fancy. Yeah. I, I don't could, have a title either. I might be leaving any moment. My title has garbage in it, so <laughs> you win. Um, yeah, change in sports. It's an interesting conversation, I feel like, because... Nobody likes change. But there's re like there are changes I can understand, like technology, like goal line cameras, we that didn't exist when football first started because cameras didn't exist when football sure, first started. Sure. And so adding them now, I get why it helps the game. But things like, hey, let's do a two point conversion and then also a field goal. And it's like, well, that's that's a very specific Colts thing to do. Yes. The Colts are like, <laughs> you know what? We happen to have one of the best kickers in the game. How about if um, oh, after we get a two point conversion, our really good guy gets to get us more points? But I feel like, what, what's your opinion on change? Because I know mine. I want to know yours. <sighs> I mean, I just uh, I just burn everything behind me as I move forward with my life. But I understand how like other people hate change. I worked online for I still work online, but I worked on websites where if you changed anything to the site, people were like, "I hate this." Oh, every hey, time. Hey, we've given you uh, private comments now so that you won't get your information stolen. I, I liked it better it. the old way. I hate it. <laughs> so yeah, change. People are are very not receptive to change. I feel like, in terms of changing the rules of a sport. The sport was created that way for a reason. Yeah. Keep it the way it is. I think that like that should be the, the basic. You want to have like baseball today is, is pretty identifiable with the way baseball was exactly. in 1865. And whenever or you see in movies, they like go to a sporting event, even if it's like 2025, it's the sport looks completely different. And I'm always like, I feel like football's still gonna kind of look like I hope it still looks like football of course. 20 years from now. So a change should be in response to something that's lacking in the game. If the fans aren't satisfied with the product on the field, they should that's when you should consider changing the game, right? right. And like baseball, they're looking at it, they're like, hey, you know what? Our sport has a lot of people standing around and doing nothing, and maybe if they did less standing, <laughs> we could uh, <laughs> move, move the game along. along a little bit. So I think that's one of the things that they're just trying to change with the times. I mean, right, yeah. aren't we all? Yeah, and it, the interesting thing too is like where the change for the sport originates because I feel like that's important you said fans yeah I agree with that as a fan yeah. I would love for fans and in the control. NFL it's when the Colts don't get their way yeah, in the playoffs exactly. and then they like they when see. it comes from owners down or or coaches down I feel like that
that's when they're more tailored towards. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's where it's problematic. Yeah, I think the best example of change in sports recently is the use of technology for goal line uh, goal line technology in soccer. Yeah. Where uh, it used to be a linesman staring from 30 yards away. I think the ball crossed the line, and now they have like, oh, hey, it takes two seconds. Because why wouldn't you? I kind of get it because you, the refs still have to have some sort of control. Yeah. You don't want to take all the power away and make everything really robotic. But like the SMU, the NCAA game, the, the SMU UCLA oh, the, oh with, the, with the goaltending call. It's Awful. Like, why, why can't we check the camera? And see if that's a bad call or not. We have the camera. Mm -hmm. Everyone at home's going to see the camera, and everyone at home's going to say that that ref made the wrong call. And then they're like, "Oh, by the way, that's not reviewable." Yeah. How why? Do they, I, I don't know. How do you like? Is that a good change, or do you think that that takes too much power away from the people who are supposed to be controlling the sport? I say robot referees and umpires. Merp merp goaltending. We merp. just need cold, unfeeling. <laughs> <laughs> arbiters be, of the sport. They'd probably be better at it. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty bad at everything, so that's true. let's but hand it over to the robots. The interesting thing is you mentioned soccer, which also had like a very bad rule change. Because didn't they do that awful like dribbling up shootout oh, thing? MLS in its original incarnation, the yeah. MLS that almost folded, mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing penalty kicks, first of all, they, they were like, no ties, this is America, we ain't gonna have ties. And so America. Uh, it was no overtime, because uh, that's for the Europeans. Uh, and it was, they started from 35 yards out and they dribbled on to goal as if it was a hockey shootout. It's weird. Yeah, it was, it was actually the wrong idea and they changed it. Which is good. That's the good change but, they, to make. but it started as a change that was awful. Yeah. So again, I think it's important to uh, tinker when necessary. When you're like, hey, this is bad, that's when we should change it. What about in terms of, of safety? You know, with the NFL especially, they're talking about cha making changes in order to protect player safety, which I feel like is good, but you also feel like it could it could go too far and change the nature of the sport. I mean, uh, there have been a lot of studies that suggest the helmets themselves are what cause yeah. uh, Get rid of helmets. That's what I think. Get rid of helmets. I'm serious. It would stop concussions because you wouldn't hit a guy as hard. It's not the, Yeah, again, rugby doesn't, head on the... rugby doesn't have the same exactly. problems. Exactly. And they do a lot of tackling in that sport, too. So no helmets. We there sign we off on it. We solved it. Bravo. It. Done. Done. Fantastic. You're welcome, Goodell. Uh, Matt, thank you for being here yeah. and having this very interesting conversation with me. Don't change. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed Coming it. up, uh, I talked to the man, the myth, the legend, Bill Raftery, about lingerie and onions. Welcome back to Garbage Time, the show that's best enjoyed with an ice cold insert sponsor here. This week I got a chance to hang out with college basketball commentator Bill Raftery, one of the most iconic broadcasters in any sport. He was a great player in his own right. He was actually drafted by the Knicks. Did you know that? Uh, then he coached at Seton Hall for 12 seasons before becoming a broadcaster. Now you may not know Bill's face, but you definitely know his calls. For instance... Right here, top one for three. <laughs> vegetable humor. He's working his first Final Four on CBS this year after doing radio coverage for the last 23 years. And if you ask me, it's about damn time. Hi, Bill. How are you? Good. I was taught to do just, this by... Oh. No, listen, I'm you not won't from, fit in the frame if you say I'm not up. from Boston, but I have some class, you know. Well, cheers. Thank I you for we, being here. I know we don't drink this early in the morning, but... <laughs> so this is your first year doing the Final Four, I mean, Correct. on TV. Correct. You did 23 years? Something uh, like radio? that. Something, Something like, like that. that. And the old joke, a face made for that's radio. That's what I'm saying. I was going to ask you, did they realize that you had the face for well, TV? The, that smart aleck remark I'll get to in a second. But <laughs> it is scary because uh, on radio they don't see you, obviously. And I might shock the country. And they say, look at that old <laughs> fuck. What the, heck? the unfortunate part about this is I'm, I have to behave, I think, for four days in <laughs> Indianapolis, whereas I was... Not the life of the party, but I knew where the parties were. Oh, did you? <laughs> so you're the guy I should look up. Who's the best announcer to drink with? Uh, well, there's a lot of good ones. <laughs> I must, but I would give the nod to Vern Lundquist. Yeah? Yeah. The reason is it's not the consumption, <laughs> which, which, which he certainly can handle. It's the myriad of friends that he brings to the show. Uh, you know, he's the, the most interesting man in the world. Have you ever drank with John Gruden? John, no. Have your paths ever crossed? No. I feel like he'd be real fun to drink with. I, you know, I think he would. I don't know if I could handle the facial gyration stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think be, I'd be like... You think Grant Hill's going to be able to get through the show without injuring himself? 
Ooh, that, you know, that is nasty. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you order a sandwich or a burger, mm -hmm. what do you like to get on top? You know, like lettuce or tomato? Mm -hmm. Ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> Pepper. Okay. I like avocado. <laughs> Sometimes I like an egg on my burger. And I do like vegetables on there. With like, the like chopped vegetables? Yeah, chopped uh, string beans. <laughs> Anything I don't like, like I don't like peas because they fall off the plate and I have to go pick them up. Oh uh, right, we have to talk about onions. Uh, right. We got to talk uh. about onions. Um, what does onions mean? It's just something to say that you have courage. Now, if you think anything onions. different, you obviously you know need some help. You didn't go to a Catholic school if you think that way. Uh, it just popped out once. Just popped out. When I blurt things out, it usually gets bleeped. If oh, I say the first I thing see. that comes to mind, I it's see. I see. not usually good. Well, that could hurt your career, it probably you know, will. eventually, but uh, you're doing okay so far. Have you ever thought of saying, like, if there's something really fun that, just Funyuns. Funyuns. Yeah, like if there's, like, a really fun play, Funyuns. No, don't try and make up words. Funyuns. Maybe, but, <laughs> what if, like, someone did some fancy footwork and you said, Bunions? That's, no, I like that. They, they have some apparatus for men that they put under their suit. And that's how lingerie on the deck came. Because uh -huh. my mother would be offended if I said that word. Like, like athletic supporter. Jo like jock strap? <laughs> I, you don't want me to Mom, say it? Mom, um, it wasn't me. So basically I'm learning all your catchphrases are just television appropriate ways to say words that are not okay to that say. That are suggestive. Yeah. That's a nice way of looking at it. And I, never, I never considered that. What's your second favorite sport? If obviously basketball, I'm going to say it's your first. I enjoy golf. I mean, I'm, I'm terrible. You used to coach golf, didn't you? Yes. I did golf on the air for a number of years. He's five, five feet away. you got to learn how to whisper. I couldn't do that. <sighs> you can't really. Like, Great. Onions! Okay, yeah. <laughs> the one thing I'd love to do is do golf and say, kiss off the grass. Paying athletes, what do you think? Uh, as long as I get paid a commensurate amount, you know, I'll be happy. Uh, I do think kids, uh, most of the kids late in my career, the, the families really could use help mm. so that the kid could have a new sweater once a month or a new shirt or be able to buy a hamburger. But I don't know what number that'll become hamburger with, with, with avocado. Right? <laughs> Such a good sport, that Bill Raftery. Coming up, did your team's March Madness run end a little earlier than expected? We found some things for them to do once they get back to campus. You know, in addition to drinking. Welcome back to Garbage Time. Feed your dog a treat right now so it associates my voice with a reward. I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite things about March Madness are these unexpected upsets. This year, three seeds Baylor and Iowa State were both knocked out in the first round, which sucked for them and for my bracket. But hey, guys on those teams, chin up. I know you expected to be playing for another few weeks, and I know it may feel like your life is over, but really, it's only half over. Because don't forget, you are student athletes. So it's time to embrace being a student. To help you out, I took a look at some real student events, these are real, that you can check out on campus since you're now stuck there for the rest of the spring. First stop, Baylor University. Hey seniors, now might be a good time to start considering that a career in basketball may not pan out. So why not stop by Seminar Room 103 on Tuesday and learn how to mail merge using Microsoft Word. Those resumes aren't going to send themselves. Need some brain food? Hey, why not head over to the East Village Dining Commons for Create Your Own Pasta Night, where anything can happen. Rigatoni Alfredo? Gnocchi Carbonara? I don't know. Mac and cheese? That's a good one. Don't hold back. Or check out the insane Chemistry Magic Show at the Mayborn Museum Complex. Between the chemistry and the magic, you know there's going to be hot girls there. <laughs> And we didn't forget about you, Iowa State Cyclones. Here's what's popping off in Ames. Be sure to check out the Sock Monkeys class at the Memorial Union Workspace this Monday. It's $33 to participate, and since it costs that much, I assume the Sock Monkeys are made of real monkeys. Cool! Have you ever thought to yourself, wow, this professionally made paper is way too high quality for me. I wish I could struggle with something more parchment-like. Well then swing by the paper making workshop. Who knew paper could be more than just 
that thing a student aide writes for you. And that's not all. How about miniature bookmaking, storm spotting, feminist embroidery? Because I think we can all agree, it's time for gender equality in embroidery. <laughs> and lastly, it's time for the garbage time hero of the week. This week, it's the inspiring tale of an all-Canadian basketball player whose last name starts with F and rhymes with duck. Guillaume Carabagiel Fouki. Fouki is how it's technically pronounced. But I think we can all agree, that says f <laughs> He led the Medicine Hat Rattlers in scoring this season, but the school wouldn't even let him put his last name on the back of his jersey. Because like I said, that, that does say f uh, His team may have tried to hide his name, but not us. We celebrate it. So in honor of Guillaume, as his team plays uh, this week in the national championship, we decided to put together a tribute for f sake. I dream I move. And that's it for me, guys. Uh, send us your questions via Twitter, Facebook, or email, and we'll tackle them on Wednesday in Junk Mail, which you can find on my YouTube channel, along with other digital exclusives and highlights from the show. Follow at Garbage Time on Twitter and Garbage Time TV on Instagram. And of course, let your friends know they can watch this whole episode online starting tomorrow at foxsports.com slash garbage time. Huge thanks to Matt Ufford and Bill Raftery. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I miss you already.